welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Well, with all of the tributes and remembrances behind us for the moment now, although we will never forget them, it's time for football. Welcome back to NRG Stadium in Houston, everyone, where the Jacksonville Jaguars have won the toss, and they will defer. So Trevor Lawrence will have to wait just a little bit longer, Arch, for his NFL debut. Yes, sir, and what a debut it will be. Jacksonville fans have been waiting for this for a long time. I think the NFL has been waiting for this for a long time, ever since Trevor Lawrence was a freshman at Clemson. Impressive young man, but now he gets a chance, Greg, to see if he can do it in the National Football League. Everything that came out of the preseason regarding him was positive. All good news. Everybody with the thumbs up. And the only thing left now is to see how well he does it on the playing field when the games count. Number 19 deep is Andre Roberts. 5'11", 195 in his 12th season from the Citadel. Local fans are pumped as the Texans try to rebound from a 4-12 and season a year ago after having won back-to-back -back AFC South championships the previous two years. Number four, Josh Lambeau, set to kick it away for Jacksonville, and we are underway. This one will sail through and out of the end zone for the touchback. And so onto the field comes Tyrod Taylor. Previous stints with the Chargers. The Browns, the Ravens, and the Buffalo Bills were his head coach now. David Culley was his quarterback coach back in 2017. And it was Buffalo where he played his best football. 46 starts, and he was at his best. Throwing the ball down the field, being mobile, getting outside the pocket, and frustrating defenses running the football. Mark Ingram in the backfield along with Tyrod Taylor on first down. And it is Ingram. And Ingram gets about five, maybe even six yards. Damian Wilson in on the stop. Offensive line, much as expected of this O-line for Houston. The Texans averaged less than 92 yards a game rushing a season ago. And one guy who told us he's ready to roll, Arch, Mark Ingram. What did he say? 11 seasons popped up real quick, right? But he feels like he still has a lot of, quote, high-level football back in the tank. Taylor to throw, sideline pass, oh. and it is incomplete. Shaquille Griffin almost made the pick on the sideline. It'll be third and four. Boy, how about this for anticipation and transition? Shaquille Griffin just sees it, reads the quarterback's eyes, and boy, had a chance to start the game off in magnificent fashion. Excellent break on the ball, but that's why they went after him in the offseason. They needed corners that had man-to-man -man ability, guys that could go take away the football. Three interceptions last year could have started off in a big way. Lindsey and Burkhead in the backfield on third and four. Taylor throwing sideline, and this one is overthrown. Pass intended for Nico Collins. And so the Texans go three and out. Good start for Jacksonville's defense, and a little shaky there. Had a really nice first down run with Ingram. And as we said, this offense is going to be built around the running game first and foremost. That was not a huge commitment under Bill O'Brien. They want to run the football, but when you get in second, third, and medium, you've got to be able to convert on those passes. Jamal Agnew is deep for the kick. Agnew from the 21. And he's going to be buried back at the 20-yard line. Good special teams coverage by the Houston Texans, led by Tremont Smith, number 24. And here comes Trevor Lawrence, number one pick overall in the NFL draft, 34-2 and two as a starter at Clemson, where he broke all the records held there by Deshaun Watson. Well, Trevor Lawrence has always been by far the best player on the field at every level that he's ever played in. 
I don't know if he's really ever had to deal with adversity. Certainly going to see it here in the National Football League, but he sure looks the part, Greg. Snap number one. And he'll throw it. And it tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. Tipped by Vincent Taylor. Illegal formation. Offense number 17. Five yard penalty. First down. So the illegal formation call is against the Jaguars, specifically DJ Chark. And the ball is backed up now to just outside the 10 yard line. And second and 15 for the Jaguars. So what do you say, Arch? Now, now you got that little hitch over with? Uh, yeah, I think so. What, you said, uh, how's it going to feel, you know, to get that first hit? I think you'd like to start a little bit better than that, but good play by Vincent. Play clock winding down. And that's not going to count. They didn't get the snap off in time, I don't believe. Timeout. Jacksonville. So Jacksonville. Their first of the half. Called time before the play clock late. expired. It's a good timeout by Urban Meyer because he sees what's happening. This is a blitz and they don't have the protection. He doesn't call a timeout. Trevor Lawrence is going to get hit right in the back. So not a great start. for the Jacksonville offense. Got to get that operation a little bit tighter, but a nice job by Desmond King to come off the edge. Welcome to the NFL. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. That was more of a, a little love tap, I would say. And I asked him when we talked with, with, with Trevor Lawrence if he needed one of those hits to get him over the jitters. He says, well, everybody likes to get a little hit. Not a whole lot. Huge. <laughs> First and 15. Lawrence had to get rid of that one as the screen dissipated. James Robinson, the nearest to catching the ball. The anchor of this offensive line is center Brandon Linder, who missed the second half of last season with an ankle injury. The backs of the receivers, Arch, you say DJ Chark could be very key for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, he has to have a big season. This is his contract year. Didn't have a great year, and he was challenged. One of the players at Urban Meyer challenged in the offseason. Didn't really like his tape. He answered the call in the offseason. He got bigger. He got stronger. Let's see if it translates to the field. Blue 80! Blue side. One second and 15. The pass to the near side, and that is incomplete. DJ Chark couldn't hold on to the low throw. And it'll be third and 15. That Houston defense up front. Whitney Wirt Merciless had limited practice time this week with a thigh injury, but he's out there. They need Merciless. Look, there's no J.J. Watt. 101 career sacks. 280-some quarterback hits. It's a different era here in Jacksonville. New scheme. They need Whitney Merciless, who's lined up on the left side of the Jacksonville offensive line. He's got to be able to come up in a big way here on third down. Third and 15. That pass over the middle, and that is complete. There's Lawrence's first completion in the NFL in LaVisca Chenault to the far side of the field. He is out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. That's not enough for a first down. And the punting unit comes on. The Texans showing blitz. They're going to drop out their linebackers in zone coverage. Chenault says he's the most talented offensive player by far right now on the roster, but 15 yards, too much to go, and a good job by Lovey Smith's defense of getting off the field. Andre Roberts deep for the punt. High and to the near side of the field, and that will bounce out of bounds very close to the 15-yard line, and that is where Houston will get started when we come back. 13-41 to play in a scoreless first quarter.
Welcome back, everyone. There's David Culley in his first year as head coach in the National Football League. Coached the wide receivers in Baltimore the last two years. He's been an assistant in the NFL for 27 years. He was a college coach for 16 years. That man is a coach through and through. Yeah, they say he is. Uh, players say he's like the old man at the barber shop, just spitting wisdom, right? He's been around so long. I kind of got the feeling when we spoke with him in our interviews, the same thing. Ingram to the right side and pulling tacklers along with him. Josh Allen finally making the stop. David Culley recruited to play at Vanderbilt by Bill Parcells, who was the defensive coordinator there. Four-year letter winner in the mid-70s. The first black quarterback ever to play for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Gain of six on the play, second and four, and Ingram again. Plowing his way across the 25 to about the 27-yard line and a first down. One other thing about David Cully is asked him who his emergency quarterback is going to be today. And he said, Davis Mills. And I said, <laughs> and if it's not Davis Mills, he said, me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a sight? <laughs> So the first down for the Texans now at their own 27-yard line. Play fake. Taylor on the move. Looking. Throwing. Down the field. It is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Pharaoh Brown. Greg, one thing I, you're going to see in this offense is you're going to see a lot of movement passes. And when I used to study Tyrod Taylor when he was at Buffalo. At times, I thought he didn't anticipate well that he held on to the ball. Part of that, I think, is his size. And he was a quarterback that had to wait to see it before he threw it. Expect a lot more design rollouts and quarterback bootlegs to get him outside for some vision. Taylor, going to keep it this time and slide down at about the 35-yard line. That'll be a couple of yards short of a first down. C.J. Henderson will get credit for the stop. Not only does it fit what they do in the run game, but think about what, what Kevin Stefanski did last year with Baker Mayfield. All those short rollouts, those quarter rollouts, half rollouts. I imagine you're going to see a lot more of that from Taylor. On third down, that pass is complete, and it is a first down. Pharaoh Brown on the receiving end. That rollout stuff is nice, Arch, as long as you have a quarterback who can pull it off. Absolutely. And to recognize what is going on with the defense and see that you might have a mismatch. Look at what this tight end bunch does. It causes a little bit of confusion. Taylor sees the confusion, gets it out to his wide open receiver, and they pick up another first down. Play fake. Taylor running out of time. Being chased and caught from behind. That is Josh Allen. Our conversation with Josh Allen, he was determined to come out here and lead the charge for this Jacksonville defense. Yeah, I think he's fired up. You know, he came out on fire, made the Pro Bowl as a rookie, injured his knee last year, only two and a half sacks. He put on some weight. He's back to his college weight, about 265, 270 pounds, and he's standing up this year. Really suits his game. Get a pretty good idea from talking to him that he is ready to go and he loves the new defensive scheme. On the pass over the middle, and that is complete close to midfield to Danny Amendola, the veteran who just recently signed on with the Houston Texans in his 13th season. Nothing like being on the street for six or seven months, getting your number called, signed up and catching your first pass on Sunday. They need some help at slot receiver. Anthony Miller, he's out with the shoulder. Amendola, he's been there, he's done it. Experienced receiver, he'll get a lot of balls. Third and five now. Taylor, sideline again, complete again. And that's Amendola again for a first down. You hear players talk about there are times that they work out at home and stay ready. And for Amendola, that's exactly what he said is paying off. Absolutely. And you see, that was another close bunch formation. 
in man-to-man -man coverage. That's the second time in this drive where the, where the Jaguars have been beaten to the outside in man coverage coming out of a bunch. Ingram in the backfield. This is Ingram looking for running room and nowhere to go. He's dragged down just inside the 45-yard line. Rayshon Jenkins leading the way. Jenkins. Greg, I'm excited to see Mark Ingram. He's always been one of my favorite backs. Love his style. Physical, downhill, has a nose for the end zone. Two years ago, what do you have, 15, 16 touchdowns? Had a career low last year for Baltimore, but I think we're going to see the Mark Ingram of old in this offense. I think he's ready to go and excited again to see him play. Hard to believe he's in his 11th season in the NFL out of Alabama. The give is to David Johnson, and David Johnson about a yard to the 42. So third and nine now for the Houston Texans, and once again, Tyrod Taylor had to find a way. And this is the part of the game where he's got to get better from where he was in Buffalo. This is an obvious passing situation. The ball's got to come out with timing and with rhythm. He can't hesitate. He's got to be able to anticipate the throw and hit it on time. Under pressure, going deep. Inside the 10. Double coverage, and he come down with that football. He did. Brandon Cooks. No one wants to let go, but the officials have made their decision. That's a catch by Cooks. Catch it. Sure looks like it. What a catch. Boy, you see Jenkins had it and lost it, it looked like. Nader what a catch. Nader Johnson from the two yard line in the backfield. The handoff lost it on the ground. Jacksonville has it at the five. Josh Allen with the recovery. They're going to take that back. Boy, it looked like the ball was snapped just as Lindsay, almost as if the ball wasn't snapped in time, but almost at the exact moment that he passed a, uh, passed Tyrod Taylor under center. Look, he gets there almost right away, and Taylor has to try and manage the snap and get it to a, a Lindsay who's almost at full speed. That exchange just didn't work. They're going to say that is an incomplete forward pass. Right. The toss, because he tossed it, that's a pass. So on second and goal, this is Ingram. At about the two, as we come up on seven minutes to play in what is right now a scoreless first quarter. Well, you got to like this drive. First series wasn't very good. Taylor almost throws a pick. They couldn't convert in third and short. But on third down on this drive, he's been on target. And that big one to Brandon Cooks. Ingram, left side, touchdown. Four times. Houston converted on third down on this drive. And this one gets the touchdown. Yep. Rayshon Jenkins, safety against Ingram. And you'd like to think that a guy that runs with the power like Ingram, he's going to win that battle. Jenkins doesn't really have a chance. He just puts a shoulder on him. And we talked about it. Uh, Mark Ingram knows how to hunt for the end zone. What a drive. What a rebound from that first series for Houston to get on the board. The regular Houston kicker, Kaimi Fairbairn, is injured. This is Joey Sly for the extra point. 
straight and true and with 639 to play in the first quarter. The Houston Texans jump onto the scoreboard first. Ingram with the touchdown, 7 nothing. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Gillette, the best a man can get. Sonic, this is Howie Sonic. And by Rocket Mortgage, for the playbook on home loans, Rocket Cab. Just a reminder, Arch, some of us are really good at playing the game and the rest of us are really good at tailgating before the game. Yeah, which one would you, what category do you fall in? Really good tailgating before the you, game. You big tailgating? <laughs> I feel like you're a gamer. No? No. Come on, man. Listen, you know my mantra, you can almost get hurt out there. <laughs> Jamal Agnew. There you go. Not going to return this one. Hey, want to remind you, Paramount Plus is the home of the world's game. Streaming more than 2,000 soccer matches live, including Syria A, UFA Champions League, and then the NWSL, and Concafa. Concafa. Darn, I want to get this. Concafa. World Cup qualifiers. Paramount Plus, try it free. You get the next one, Arch. Don't laugh. <laughs> uh, no thanks. So first down, Jacksonville down a touchdown. James Robinson in the backfield along with Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence on the move, throwing, has a man open and he's got him across midfield and inside the 45. That is Marvin Jones with the catch. And a first down. Boy, really a nice throw in recognizing the defense here from Lawrence. This is zone coverage. You got a corner playing short with a safety over the top. And watch how Lawrence just threads it right in between while he's on the move. Really nice first down play. That's good action right there. And exactly what Urban Meyer needed on this second series. 33-yard gain on the play. This is Robinson. And Robinson finds a hole on the left side. And we get a penalty flag flying in from the secondary as he is brought down at about the 30 yard line. Holding offense number 65. 10 yard penalty. We play first down. That's the center, Brandon Linder. And that nullifies a pretty good pickup. Yep, Linder's going to come out, and he's just going to get his hands as he gets to that next level. I think it was on, yep, that's the inside linebacker, Kirksey. You can see the grab right there as Kirksey tries to fall off of that block, but really nice piece of running by Robinson. You know, when you watch Robinson last year, he was an excellent inside runner between the tackles. And he just had a way of finding that small little crack in getting into that linebacker area. The next step for him is Ladies. trying to bust the big play. First and 20 now. Play fake that time. And the pass over the middle is complete. Inside the 40-yard line, and that is Marvin Jones. Update time. Let's get you back to New York for the first time this season. J.B. and Boomer. Hey, Greg, a familiar pair. That's right, J.B. Russell Wilson, 23-yard touchdown pass to Tyler Lockett right down the middle of the field. Good adjustment by Lockett. They take a 7-3 lead over the Colts. Greg Gumbel, Adam Archuleta, and the talented A.J. Ross. All right, guys, thank you very much. Second and five. Oh. And on the quick slant, it's off the hands and incomplete. James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end, could pull it in. It'll be third down. You know, we'll be talking about him all day today, Arch, but James Robinson, what a story he was last year. Undrafted, 1,400-plus yards from scrimmage, including 1,000 rushing yards. It was the most reliable and the best, most consistent weapon for Jacksonville. Now, Houston has been sending their linebackers and putting them in the line of scrimmage a lot on that first series. This time looks like they're going to play back and play some coverage. On third and five, quick pass. Off the hands of his intended receiver, DJ Shark. And that'll force. Let's see, the field goal. 
Yep, ball was behind him, but look, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Everybody knows, Chark knows, got to catch that, and shoot, that was almost an interception. Justin Reed comes over from the free safety spot and almost gets a huge turnover. So this is a 55-yard attempt. Josh Lambeau has made seven straight field goals from 50 or more yards. From 55, long enough, but too wide. So no points on the board and pretty good field position for the Houston Texans and their new head coach, David Culler. To play here in the first quarter as uh, Trevor Lawrence thinks about it. Can't help, I'm sure, thinking about the three dropped passes that he's had so far early on here in the game. Taylor back to work and throwing over the middle. He's got his man inside the 40 yard line is Chris Conley. And that's a first down. Here it is for the second time today. The rookie Campbell got beat on the one to Brandon Cooks and then in zone coverage, you got to have more awareness. Once you read that it's not a run, you've got to get your depth and you got to get back there in the throwing lane. Nice read by Tyrod Taylor to spot the open zone and get the ball out to his receiver. 17-yard pickup. Taylor to throw again. Under pressure. Trying to get loose. Flips it out. And completes it to about a 25-yard run. And Pharaoh Brown has more yardage inside the 15. Well, this is just excellent from Taylor. Excellent play, feeling the rush, okay? But he doesn't panic, right? He goes out, he steps up, keeps his eyes up, and then look, finds Brown coming open across the middle. Doesn't get much better than that. We talked about, look, the first series, rough series, but shoot, you look at how he played in that second series and how he just managed that play, really nice. This is Ingram. Inside the 10 to about the 7. And these Texans running and throwing the ball with a sense of purpose here as the uh, final minutes of the first quarter wind down. Greg, you cannot be a good running football team unless you have excellent tight end blocking. The tight ends are so huge and so instrumental. That's a big emphasis here on the Texan football team to get those tight ends involved, not only in the run game, but in the passing game. But that's the kind of effort it's going to take. On second and four, Taylor looks right, throws left, and this is his man, David Johnson, close to the goal line. It'll be third and four. Well, that's, a, that's the matchup you want right there. You get David Johnson. Made a name for being one of the best receiving backs in football, matched up with the middle linebacker. You know, typically you'd probably like to see Miles Jack out there, who's really the space athlete here for Jacksonville, or Jacksonville. Runs a little inside out route, but the ball just isn't there. So David Johnson alongside Taylor in the backfield on the third and four. This side, end zone, touchdown Johnson. Jack. Here it is. Same thing. The same, this little look at the traffic in the pick that that creates. Really nice job by Jordan Akins, the tight end. He gets upfield. And now Miles Jack, he can't get over the top to cover David Johnson in the flat. Joey Sly for the extra point. And the kick is perfect. 2.25 to play here in the first quarter. And the Houston Texans have built themselves a two touchdown lead. Back to NRG Stadium in Houston after this. If Mark Mr. is sponsored by Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Anvar, 
T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Who, you ask, was the last number one overall pick to win his first career start? David Carr in 2002 against the Dallas Cowboys also happened to be the Texans' first game in franchise history since the merger. Number one overall picks. Quarterback 4-20-1 in their first NFL starts. David Carr. I remember Mike Vick, John Elway, Jim Plunkett. Noteworthy names who came right out of college and started to get it done. You know, Adam, this, this Houston defense just doesn't look right without J.J. Watt on the field. You know that? <laughs> uh, you're right. Very strange. No Watt, no Watson. It's a new era, but you got to love being up 14 nothing. I'm sure they do. They pass out to the flat. That is complete. And across the 30 to about the 32-yard line is LaVisca Chenault. I want to remind you, Inside the NFL is now streaming. The hardest-hitting team of analysts in football provide expert insight and exclusive commentary you won't find anywhere else. Stream new episodes Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. So eight-yard pickup for second and two. This quick pass is complete and to about the 35-yard line. And that looks like that'll be enough for a first down. Chenault once again on the receiving end. Greg, Jaguars, you got to like how Trevor responded in his second series. But to me, it comes, it comes down to mistakes. He had a couple of key penalties, brought back a big run. Yeah, the ball was behind the receivers, but you have a couple drops and a chance to convert on third down. Jacksonville has to clean up their offense here to have a chance. This is Carlos Hyde changing direction a couple of times. And penalty markers fly as he makes it just across the 45-yard line. Land Clark is our referee today. Holding offense number 40. A 10 yard penalty to play first down. So that negates the first down. Just talked about it. Second time they've had a big run. And it gets called back because of a penalty. It's been at least one or two mistakes on every one of their first three drives here to start the game for Jacksonville. And a timeout is called. Timeout. Jacksonville. By the Jaguars. We'll take a quick break. We're back in 30 seconds right after this. Jake from State Farm. You here to jam? Air? No, just an aspiring singer-songwriter with my bandmates. Here giving out that Rogers rate to regular folks like us. State Farm has rates that fit anyone's budget. Hmm, is that so? Mahalo, Kiki. In that case, this one goes out to an ex-best friend of mine who took my rate, just gave it away. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Just 49 seconds remain here in the first half, and Jacksonville has used its second timeout. Urban Meyer that had a decent coaching career in college, didn't he? Not bad. Certainly knew how to recruit. Some great players. But this is a whole different animal. But I'm excited to see how he does. On first and 16, the pass out into the flat. That is Chenault once again, and this time a swarming Houston defense brings him to a stop short of the 30-yard line. Well, how about that defense? You said the exact word, swarming defense. You know, I know that they're just trying to get the ball out, trying to create some run-after-the-catch opportunities with Chenault, the quick screen. 
but at some point, you know, you've had some pretty good success when you've thrown the ball down the field, both on play action and against zone coverage. They're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive here against the Texan defense, but way to swarm to the football by Lovey Smith's defense. Second and 17. As time winds down here in the quarter, that pass is incomplete. Intended for Marvin Jones. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter. The home folks are happy. Houston 14, Jacksonville nothing. Back to NRG Stadium right after this. Girls are back in Houston. This is NRG Stadium, and the Houston fans are pretty energetic about a 14 nothing lead. Absolutely. And third and 17. You got to expect zone coverage across the board. All seven back defenders, eyes on the quarterback. Lawrence has to be careful on this snap. Lawrence steps up, throws, found a man midfield, and inside the 45 yard line is DJ Chark for the first down. That's a big conversion on third and 17. Boy, what a play. This position on the back side of three receivers, you've got to play this in cut if you're Zach Cunningham. You know that that's where you're getting attacked. Now, a really nice job of Lawrence looking down the middle and not looking that direction on his eyes initially, but that's all about the Will linebacker there. Cunningham has to be in that throwing lane. Carlos Hyde, running room on the right side, cuts it back to the middle. And down to the 31-yard line. Tackle is made by Vincent Taylor. Well, I was just going to say they need to run the ball, but Chris Manhurts, the tight end, just gets a tremendous block. Before that... This is Hyde again. Before that, yeah, before that, they had run it a couple of times, only to have had him called back to the right. holding penalties. They only had one official run attempt. That was a four-yard run by Hyde. Robinson, you know, broke one. That was called back. Hyde had another big run. That was called back. And the mistakes had put him down. So I know Urban Meyer doesn't want to drop back and throw the football every single time. The only way they can try to get some balance is to minimize those mistakes. You know, to use the cliche, stay on schedule and use the running game to grind out this defense. On second and nine, play fake, throwing over the middle and through the hands of DJ Shark. Update time once again. Let's get you back to the NFL today in New York. Seattle likes coming east, Greg. What about my voice? That's right, 11 and 1 in their last 12 in that case. Russell Wilson, second TD of the day, this time to Gerald Everett, the former Ram. Tight end, they extend their lead 14 to 3 over Indianapolis. Back to Greg Gumble. All right, guys, thank you. Here, Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence looking at a third and nine. Okay, third nine. Last time it was zone coverage. Looks like here it's going to be zone coverage again. Lawrence on the move, looking, looking, and throws. And there's a flag down as that falls incomplete. Officials consulting with the Houston sideline. Holding. Offense number 75. Ten yard penalty. Third down. Juwan Taylor, the right tackle. Boy, I thought looking at it live. Initially, I thought it was pretty pretty good technique by Taylor. I don't see the hole there. Well, one more time, it's third and what? Third and 19. Odds are you're not going to be able to do two third and 19s in one drive. But again, expect zone coverage. Linebackers have to get deep and get in the throwing lane. They need the 21-yard line for a first down. Lawrence, time, throwing over the middle and couldn't connect with O'Shaughnessy, his tight end. And we have a flag down on the near side of the field.
There are fouls by both teams. Illegal formation. Offense, number 74. That penalty is disregarded by rule. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 97. A 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. So that penalty is on Malik Collins. Yeah, he comes in late, and you, you just can't club the quarterback in the face. Doesn't look like much, but you're going to get called for that every time. That That is a big one. And I know if, you know, Lovey Smith right now, after playing a pretty good couple series, he's got to be furious with his defense. Twice on third and almost 20, he's given the Jacksonville yeah. offense yeah. a first game. Green 80. Green 80's on. This is James Robinson. Robinson to about the 22 yard line. Robinson's 1,070 rushing yards, fifth best in the NFL last year. It's pretty amazing, especially when you consider the fact that. You know, Jacksonville went through three different quarterbacks last year. They didn't really have a passing offense or a consistent offense. You know, James Robinson was only the consistent weapon there. Teams certainly were able to key on him. But every time he touched the ball, he was able to grind out positive yards. That was his first rush Louis. today. The other one negated by penalty. Louis. Second and seven. Lawrence. Manhurts the tight end and the Trevor Lawrence family approves boy really nice again Trevor Lawrence has really done a nice job against the deep zone and zone coverage and this is cover three you got a safety in the middle and a corner deep they've got to collapse on this but this player has to get in that throwing lane as well you got underneath defenders. They're staying low. The ball doesn't have a chance to get over the top, and Lawrence threads the needle. The extra point is good. The very first NFL touchdown pass for Trevor Lawrence is in the books. And with 12.20 to play in the first half, Houston's lead is cut in half. It's now 14-7. Finally, Trevor Lawrence's wife, Marissa, on your left there. And she and the rest of the Lawrence family highly approving of his first touchdown pass of his career. Yeah, I'm sure she's used to approving of his game, right? Nothing new for, for her and that family, but there's a lot to approve of this game. <laughs> Andre Roberts. Across the 20 and out to the 25 and let's take a look once again at that touchdown pass just another good job of seeing zone and one thing you'll notice is that the ball is coming out extremely fast Lawrence is not holding the football and when Jacksonville doesn't make mistakes they've actually been able to to attack the the Houston secondary and find some open parts of that zone Tyrod Taylor back to work on offense now. Philip Lindsay behind him in the backfield. This is Lindsay. Not a whole lot there as he is wrestled down just across the 25 to about the 27 yard line by Roy Robertson Harris. Greg, I think you have to be extremely thrilled with the way this first half has gone for Houston offense. I think Taylor looks extremely comfortable. They're five of six on third downs. Jacksonville hasn't been able to put any pressure on him. So I would anticipate a bit more pressure, but the way they've run the football and Taylor, the way he's executed the offense, you got to be extremely pleased here with 14 points here in the second quarter. On second and seven, we'll play fake. Taylor with time and now throws far side of the field and hit his man. That's Brandon Cooks with the catch. Just across midfield and into Jacksonville territory. Got to love how Brandon Cooks gets back outside on C.J. Henderson. Look at that. Gives him a little stick. Henderson is underneath. And then the timing of that throw. 
Taylor knows that he has him to the outside, and that is placed perfectly as Cooks hits the sideline. Two is the mic. Two, two, push. Out five, we go. And off is for Lindsay, and Lindsay finds running room on the right side. Brought down short of the 40-yard line by Damian Wilson. Well, here's another back, Greg. We talked about Mark Ingram. And, and Philip Lindsay last year coming off a career low, 118 carries, 502 yards. First time that he's been under 1,000 yards. But there's no doubt about it. He is a big play threat, and he hits the hole as fast as anyone. Taylor spins out of trouble and throws it away. Caleb on chasing applying some pressure and it's now third and two. Tyrod Taylor began this day missing his first three pass attempts. He's now eight of 14 and has a really good feel for the rush and being able to escape. When do I when do I try and throw it downfield? When do I get it out of there and go to the next play? It's the same thing. Look at this close formation. And Jacksonville doesn't seem to be able to fight through that traffic. And the defender that's responsible for the guy to the flat or to the outside cannot get over the top enough. And Taylor has hit that three or four times in this game. Lindsay on first down. Nothing doing up the middle. And the stop is made once again by Roy Robertson Harris. It'll be second down. So Houston right now is, is doing a nice job executing their offense. And, and if you're Jacksonville, the key for you, it, it's been mistakes also and, and bad technique on your part. They've got to try and find a way to create some negative plays. Okay, get a tackle in the backfield, stuff the run, break up a pass. But right now, they're getting beaten man coverage. And a little premature movement. Titus Howard, the left guard, is number 71. False start. Offense, number 71. A five-yard penalty, second down. You know you've made a mistake when you pull and you're the only one in motion. Uh, usually, that's usually a dead giveaway. Yep, I would say. So now it's second and 13. Yeah, one of the few mistakes. they Houston has played a pretty clean game offensively. And again, the success of this football team is, is going to be really how the offensive line plays, the running game, and Taylor doing what he does best. That pass over the middle, and that is complete inside the 25 to about the 22 yard line. Chris Conley with the catch, the seventh year wide receiver from Georgia. And I love how Taylor just hung in the pocket. He had great patience right there. I thought he was going to flip it out to his outlet receiver, but the way he used his eyes and just at the last moment flicked it to Conley, really well done. So six consecutive third down conversion for Houston. They're looking at one here, third and three. And they've got, they're in bunch formation one more time, okay? Jacksonville's had a hard time with this. This is man-to-man -man coverage. And now they put Lindsey. That pass to the outside. That's incomplete. Rex Burkhead, the intended receiver. And that'll bring onto the field Joey Sly in the field goal unit. Yep, that's the play that, that Jacksonville needed. Miles Jack. They try to attack him, put Burkhead. You know how good of a receiver he is in the backfield, out of the backfield. But somebody had to step up and make a play for Jacksonville to stop the offensive momentum and force Houston to take a field goal attempt. Joey Sly on the active roster because of the injury to Kaimi Fairbairn. Sly. Right down the middle. 8.07 to play in the first half. Houston with a 10-point lead. Some like you to the NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 
you could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. The Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. And by Ram Trucks. Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. Well, Trevor Lawrence went to Cartersville High School in Georgia Friday night. They upset the number two ranked team in the state, beating Creekside 17-14. Cartersville scored the game-winning TD with just two minutes left in the fourth to go to 3-0 on the season. And they have some really nice uniforms <laughs> at the high school level in Georgia. Yeah, hey. We didn't have high school uh, uniforms like that when I was growing up. completely through the end zone. Let's talk about Trevor Lawrence and the kind of days he's had. Well, when they don't make mistakes, he's been sharp. He got a drop, not very good. Throws a little bit behind, another drop, but then they come in big on third and 19. He hits DJ Chark, and then how about getting the blocking tight end involved? Chris Manhurts with a 22-yard strike. Lawrence is getting the ball out of his hands extremely quickly. And again, when they don't make mistakes and the Texans play zone coverage, he's done a really nice job of finding those zones in that intermediate part of the field. Pretty confident young man when we talked to him last night. Yeah, you think winning 68 games or 70 games and, you know, being the guy your whole life. Against some really good competition yeah. at that level. A national championship, you know, first pick. Probably doesn't have a lot of confidence. One first down. Visca Chenault. Chenault with a blocker out front, not bounds at about the 35 yard line. Let's go down to AJ. Well, Greg, LaVisca Chenault has been a big target for Trevor Lawrence today. And he spoke very highly about him, about him being a big, strong, versatile play, playmaker, rather, and how fast he can play both inside the slot and outside. But something that Trevor took the initiative of during the offseason was getting together with all the wideouts and spending time with them. And he's hoping that chemistry will translate onto the field and be more reflective this afternoon. Thanks, AJ. This is James Robinson, and Robinson to about the 40-yard line. Yeah, a, a, a smart quarterback makes friends with his offensive line and his wide receivers. I think so. I think it's it, it certainly helps. But if I was if I were the Texans, you know, it's going to be hard to blitz because Lawrence is getting the ball out of his hands. So somehow you've got to do a better job of disguising and getting him to hold it account. But you might also want to start to play a bit more man-to-man -man coverage and get a little tighter with your receivers. Other one on the ground. This is Robinson trying to break it to the outside and gets a couple to about the 47-yard line. Terrence Mitchell making the stop. Four rushes. In Jacksonville's first three drives, this is the third time on this series alone that they've run the ball. Yeah, the key is, is that they've been able to stay on schedule and, and don't make any mistakes. Um, that's really kind of been the difference for Jacksonville's offense. On second and three, this is Robinson, and Robinson gets the first down as he's bumped out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 47 yard line by Eric Murray. Well, Robinson made a name for himself as a tough inside runner and here for the second time you've seen him hit the edge. He just outruns Christian Kirksey. Kirksey's a really good athlete but he gives him just a little bit of a freeze and gets one more step and now he can finish with physicality outside on the corner. Or excuse me the safety on Eric Murray. New set of downs for Jacksonville. Lawrence running out of time, throws it deep near side of the field, and it is incomplete out of bounds. Pass intended for Chenault and covered by Vernon Hargreaves. And we have a Texan still down on the ground. That is Hargreaves. Illegal formation. Offense number 74. That penalty is declined. Holding offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. So the penalty is on Jawan Taylor. 
So it's the second time earlier it was negated because it was rushing the passer. It was Cam Robinson on the other side. But what they're doing is they're getting the tackles. They're aligned too much in the backfield. And so they've got to tighten up their alignment. But that's what they've called one time on Robinson and that time on Taylor. And that is Hargreaves limping and, and they, off the field. They do not have a lot of depth at corner. Desmond King has replaced him at corner while they look at Hargraves on the sideline. And you notice that last play, Lawrence had just a small little hitch, Greg. He held it just to count, and he tried to squeeze it in deep in between that zone. And he was real fortunate that Hargraves didn't come down with the interception. So somehow, the Texans have to do a better job of getting him to hold the ball. That means the linebackers and underneath defenders get a little bit deeper so we can't make that quick decision and get the ball out of his hands if you're going to play zone. First and 20. This time it's a quick release and out to about midfield. Close to it is Marvin Jones, the 10-year vet from California. 520 to play in the first half. Much different feel from this defense than, than Houston fans were used to under Romeo Cornell and the way they used to run things. They're, you're going to see a lot of zone coverage. Now, Lovey Smith is known for defenses that take the ball away, and that's because they, they train them so well at reading the quarterback. You have seven, six or seven, sometimes eight defenders reading the quarterback's eyes and getting a break on the ball. It makes it tough to find those windows. Lawrence on second and 13. Breaks a tackle, throwing on the run, and overthrown and intercepted. Picked off by Justin Reed, and Reed brings it back inside the 50-yard line. The Houston defense had only three interceptions all season long last year, only nine takeaways, which is the worst in the NFL. Yeah, and... Lawrence with his first interception. Today, let's paint with new... Back, everyone. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Bill Cowher. All the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. I know we go. On first down, Ingram. And Ingram bulls his way just inside the 45-yard line. Clock continues to move. Coming up on four and a half to play here in the first half. That man, David Culley, has got uh, some positives to look at at halftime. Boy, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah. They got their first turnover of the season. Offense here has a great chance here going in before halftime with excellent field position. Easy, easy, easy. Alert, 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 alert. School, school, school. Yeah, we go. 44. Um, we go. On second and six, Ingram again. Mark Ingram loves being that workhorse. Doesn't he? <laughs> you know, he is... When he got to Baltimore, I look, I always loved him when he was in New Orleans, but when they matched that style with Greg Roman's offense in Baltimore, I just loved, loved watching him play. It was Taylor made for his style. On third and two, Taylor going to throw for it under pressure. Breaks free. Looking. Lofts it. And it is incomplete on the sideline. And that was Ingram. Devon Hamilton applying the pressure to Taylor and the offense staying out there on fourth and two yeah well another good job by Jacksonville's defense on third down making a play Hamilton basically was let go Scott free right up the middle and Taylor does a good job of avoiding the sack but really nowhere to go and now the punter Cameron Johnston is going to come out yeah give Jacksonville's defense credit two drives in the row stopping it forcing one a field goal and here a punt with bad field position Jamal Agnew standing inside his own 10-yard line for the Jaguars. Movement on the defense. I think that's Lorente McRae. Boy, is that a bad look.
you know, the question was was he drawn off sides. Yeah he's going with the center but that's all start. Oh, offense number 46 a five yard penalty still fourth down. Wow. Yeah, they're going to say the quick head raise from the long snapper was what drew him off sides. That's that's pretty close. John Weeks is the long snap. So it backs them up now to a fourth and seven. Texans fans thought they had themselves a free first down. Yeah, they might have it. They might have a point. I wonder how Gene would have called that. Gene's territory? Yes, sir. Fair catch is made. Close to the five yard line. 321 to play. Uh, Gene Steratore on line two, Archie. With <laughs> there's the long snapper John Weeks in this latest edition of Ask Gene Steratore. You said, what would Gene think? We have Gene with us. Talk to us, Gene. I appreciate it, Greg. Yeah, when Weeks lifts his head, he has to do that very slowly if he's adjusting as a center. And if we look back on the play, when he rises his head prior to the snap, it's very abrupt, and that's a false start and a good call by the officials. Hold on, Gene. Here's a quick pass to the near side of the field, and that is Tyron Johnson. It sounds like, it sounds like, Gene, this is something that's really open to wide interpretation by the officials. Yeah, and you know, as a referee, I would always talk to the at least the long snappers for sure, Greg, because they do move to look around at defensive postures and things like that on punts. But in that case, when you rise that quickly and that high, you've got to kill that play. It's like an exaggerated head bob by a quarterback, and you have to shut that down or they'll gain an unfair advantage moving forward. Appreciate it, Gene. Thank you. In the huddle. Offense. Five yards penalty. Second down. So we had a little huddle muddle and it costs the Jacksonville Jaguars a penalty. Can't have 12 in the huddle, Greg. Anymore. Nope. <laughs> There's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some hiccups. There's no doubt about it. But you can see it's tough. It's tough to overcome those mistakes. Lawrence on second and nine. His goal line and throwing and intercepted again at the 25 yard line. That's Hargreaves. Hargreaves to the 10. Dodges outside and is knocked out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Zone coverage, Greg. On the quarterback, watch Lawrence the entire way stares it down, and this is what they work on. All eyes on the quarterback, Hargraves. He's the underneath corner. There is nobody in the flat to capture his attention, and he just steps right in front of it and baits the rookie into another mistake. Now it's Tyrod Taylor inside the 10-yard line. Two picks in his last three throws for Trevor Lawrence. Ingram. No gain as he has hit and hit hard. AJ. Greg David Culley just grabbed Vernon Hargreaves by the helmet and was having a very special moment with him. You can tell this entire Texan sideline is really fired up by these defensive takeaways, a point of emphasis for Culley this entire season. All right, AJ, thank you. We have the two minute warning. Two minutes to play in the first half. Houston, 17 7. I've always felt. Yes, is sponsored by Domino. Get great deals on pizza, bread twist, chicken, desserts, and more. And by Northwestern Mutual. You dream it. We'll help you plan for it. A really pretty day here in Houston, Texas this afternoon. And things are looking pretty good from the Houston sideline as well. Second and goal with two minutes to play. Is it? 
penalty marker. Pharaoh Brown, the intended receiver, double covered on the near side. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 44. After this is the goal with an automatic first down. Miles Jack with the face mask penalty. Greg happened real quick. Right in here. You see just that left hand gets this, just the slightest little hook into the grill of Pharaoh Brown. That was a good call. Here's Ingram. To about the three yard line or so. Clock continues to move. Jacksonville with one timeout remaining. Houston with all three of theirs. Yeah, and you want to be pretty patient here. Now, Jacksonville gets the ball back before halftime. Now, you only have one timeout, so there's not a lot you can do here with the clock. But David Culley, he wants to grind that thing as much as he can. Taylor probably snaps the ball at about five seconds, but you don't want to leave any time left on this clock before halftime. Taylor. out of bounds. Nico Collins, the receiver. Let's see the call. Shaquille Griffin was the defender, number 26. That's a heck of a catch. Yeah, yeah. Out of bounds, yep. but... Pass interference. Offense, number 12. A 10-yard penalty. Second down. You know, Urban Meyer yeah. might have something to say about penalties at halftime. <laughs> well, he's pretty thankful that that one was called on Houston. But that was that was a lot of hand fighting. I think that one probably could have gone either way. You know, when you get in that real tight red area under five yards, there's a lot of hand action going on. Second and goal, but that's a specialty. Collins plays receiver like a basketball player. Taylor going the other direction. That's incomplete in the end zone. Third and goal. Well, you're going to look at this drive. This you're looking at what? Third and about 12. Third and about 13. You're going to look at this drive. You had a chance inside the five yard line to really punch it in and really put Jacksonville in a bad place right before halftime. You had a face mask call that gave you first down and now all of a sudden, you know, you're looking at possibly just a field goal attempt. So a blown opportunity here for Houston that they can't convert on this third down and score a touchdown. to David Johnson and it went out of bounds. See it. Was he just trying to <laughs> I don't know what this was, but I don't think David Cully wants to see that. No. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor looked up and saw four Jaguars in front of him and said, here. Well, really heads up by, by Johnson. If he would have, I just think if he would have tipped that and batted it forward. Well, that could have been disaster. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Phil, Nate, Boomer, and the coach. Scores and highlights coming up. Week one action. Verizon Halftime Report is next. So on fourth and goal, the field goal unit has taken the field for the Texans. David Culley's trying to figure out where he saw that in the playbook. <laughs> Probably similar to the offense they used to run when he was in college, I would imagine. Old option, single wing football, maybe. Or did Vanderbilt throw it out? Sing, air it out. Single wing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what they played before 1980? Single wing? I think it goes back a little further. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not really a football historian. T formation. <laughs> How about hey, that? I ran, I ran the wishbone in high school, so. Did you? Yes, sir. Oh. 
Joey Sly from 26 yards out. And once again, Sly punches it through with no doubt whatsoever. And 59 seconds remaining in the first half. It's now 20 to 7. Jacksonville downstairs to AJ. Thanks, Greg. A great start for the Texans this first half. But of course, one of the major storylines coming into this game was quarterback Deshaun Watson, who remains on the 53 man roster but is not present today and is not expected to play anytime soon. The team is still exploring potential trade options, but some very serious allegations of sexual misconduct have surfaced against Deshaun Watson that have led to 22 civil uh, investigations as well as 10 criminal investigations, in addition to investigations by the NFL, local authorities, and the FBI, leaving his future very much in question. Yeah, AJ, thank you. It is it is an unbelievable amalgam of, of situations for everyone concerned. Yep. The rampaging rumor is that Houston is trying to trade Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson has a no trade clause in his contract. Then you'd have to wonder whether or not teams will take a chance on Deshaun Watson's future. Well, I don't think there's any way that you take a chance without knowing exactly how this is going to play out. And, you know, for the Texans, they say, shoot, we can, you know, hang on to them. And it's going to cost us about $10, $11 million and, and see how the legal situation plays out. But that's the priority number one with everybody involved. Until, until you know whether or not, you know, these allegations stick, they're true or they're not, there's really no no place or nothing to do here with Deshaun Watson for him. Trevor Lawrence on first down. Just under a minute to play over the middle and through the hand. DJ Chark. So here's what I'm interested to see, Greg, and I know everybody else probably is too. You had two interceptions in a row from Trevor Lawrence, right? So how does he react? How does he bounce back? You know, does the game start to speed up and get away from him? Or does he have the ability to kind of center everything, calm down, take a reset, and get back in the saddle? So really interested to see how he responds, not only in this drive, but to start out the third quarter. That pass, and that's a little behind his intended receiver, O'Shaughnessy. It just shows you the margin for error the difference you know I know I'm being captain obvious but the difference between college and the NFL you know that first interception that may not happen in college but if you just make one small little mistake NFL defenses they're gonna make you pay right so how does he bounce back for the rest of this game and can he get back on track Jacksonville will get the ball to start the second half Quick slant, and that's off the hands of James Robinson. Third and ten. Or fourth and ten, excuse me. How many drops? Have you been counting? Four. Greg, four drops? And you got to give him a chance. A couple of those drops early in the game on third down. And I think the one thing that you see from this offense here in the first half, if they're able to stay on schedule and, and do things right and not make mistakes, they can look pretty good. But far too many mistakes if you want to have a chance at winning here in the NFL. Andre Roberts from the 23. Hits for the sideline and gets out of bounds. So 37 seconds to play here in the first half, and Houston with three timeouts. Certainly have a chance to get back in the field goal range. Three timeouts, 37 seconds. There's no question. It has been a good first half for the Houston Texans. Taylor, losing the rush, throwing to the near side, and the diving catch is made by Danny Amendola. Does he get it? Wow, what a catch. Really nicely done, but they made an adjustment at the line of scrimmage. They put Brandon Cooks on the inside at slot, 
And boy, it looked like he was scot free running down the middle of the field. They might have lost an opportunity to hit one deep. Amendola, three catches for 22 yards here in the first half. And they're going to take a look. This play of completed pass is under review. So they will. It was a nice catch, yes. They just want to know if it was a legal one or not. I say legal. It looked like to me he got the knee is down. Question is, did he have control? When did he have control? But elbow was down before like he it. slid out of bounds. I like it as a catch. All right, we'll take a quick break. Back in 30 seconds after this. You can finally buy that solid gold rocket ship. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do we have a rocket ship license? We have six players going, which means our probability of being passed is 92%. $500,000? We could buy a regular rocket ship! <laughs> no more rocket ships. Feel the NFL action like never before. Download the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app and play free for millions in prizes. Territory. You like that catch? Let's see, Gene Steratore, are you with us? I think that means he likes it. Yep. All right. Come on, come on. We would never speak for Gene. <laughs> Second and three. to David Johnson and he steps out of bounds stopping the clock with 25 seconds to play. Uh oh. He's okay. He's okay. You still got three timeouts 25 seconds left more than enough time. You can threaten any part of the field here inside outside sideline. Elusive in the pocket moves out. of all how does Taylor avoid this pressure and how he sees it that's the first part of this play Josh Allen excuse me Caleb on chase on is coming screaming across the edge and then up here he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage with cooks running away from Shaquille Griffin and he just launches it Archie. keeps his eyes downfield just launches it we have heard we have heard all week long about people cautioning and saying that Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod Taylor is not Deshaun Watson, but that was that, very much like Deshaun Watson. You, hey, great minds think alike. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's that Deshaun Watson, uh, Deshaun Watson magic, right? Hey, feel the pressure, get out the pocket, look downfield and let it fly and how about cooks how about his combat catches in this game down the field out muscling shaquille griffin twice for the football 52 yard play first and goal inside the 10 12 seconds on the clock and taylor to throw coming over the middle the catch is made in the touchdown danny amendola Here's the pick by the tight end, and it creates a wall for Amendola to come underneath. Taylor calmly stays in the pocket, sees Amendola, touchdown. The kick is good by Joey Sly with eight seconds to play in the first half. It's all Houston at this point. Really well designed play in the red zone and, and using a big target. Jordan Aiken, 6'4, 243 pound tight end. He runs right at Rudy Ford. And that creates just enough distraction that he can't see Amendola coming open underneath. 
Really well done. How is that? For a drive right before halftime. What they have about 37 seconds. We thought they were going to go for a field goal. But Tyrod Taylor, he practicing some magic, launches it. Now all of a sudden, you have a great 20-point cushion going into halftime. 229 yards passing in the first half for him. That is the second most yardage in a first half in his career. Boy, the way he has evaded pressure and just stayed calm, right? Not ready to just run out of there and scramble, but to keep it downfield and to trust his receiver like Cooks that he's going to come up and make the play incredible. So many people have said all week long that that is one of Tyrod Taylor's great gifts is to stay calm and to stay in charge. <laughs> yeah, and the fact is, look, he hasn't played a lot of football here in the last three seasons. Let's be honest. It, you didn't know what kind of rust was going to be a part of his game. But you go back to the Buffalo tape, when he was on and he was at his best, he was one of the best deep ball throwers in the NFL. Now in this game, it just happens to be the 50-50 ball, but boy, Brandon Cooks has rewarded the aggressive nature of Taylor in this game. Lawrence takes a knee, time will run out. And that's the end of a very good first half for the homestanding Houston Texans. The score, 27 to 7. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. You know how some carriers give you so little for your older busted phone you just end up living with it? I don't think so. Verizon lets you trade in your broken phone for a shiny new one. You break it, we upgrade it. You dunk it, crash it, yucks, doggy bone it. <laughs> Slam it, wham it, strawberry jam it. We upgrade it, every customer, current, new, or business. Up to $800 for the 5G phone you want. Because everyone deserves better. <clears throat> Put my phone in the washer and the dryer. There's new with Jeff Daniels. In Houston, where the homestanding Texans lead it at halftime by a score of 27 to 7. Greg Gumbel, Adam Archuleta. Uh, there's no other way to say it. Everything went very much the way of the Texans in the first half. Boy, I think you'd have to say that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You've got to be extremely pleased if you are David Cully, especially with the offense and Tyrod Taylor. Starts it off with Mark Ingram their first touchdown then David Johnson and then you see a little bit of that Tyrod Taylor magic evading the pressure and then launches a rocket 52 yards to Brandon Cooks and then right before halftime it's Danny Amendola crossing the formation and really put the Jaguars in a tough spot Jacksonville did themselves no favors whatsoever in the first half two interceptions six offensive penalties they really didn't give themselves as much of a chance as they should have the story obviously is Trevor Lawrence and how he plays but to me the biggest part of the Jacksonville's first half was their operation Greg all the penalties three illegal formation the holding calls the drops you can't do that who, regardless of who your quarterback is if you want to win in the NFL. Kick goes into and out of the end zone, and let's go down to A.J. Thanks, Greg. I can tell you Texans head coach David Culley was running ear to ear going in at the half, and he gave a lot of credit to the guys up front, giving great protection to Tyrod Taylor, who threw for 229 yards in that first half. He also gave credit to his defense with those two big takeaways, but he says penalties are, of course, an issue when it comes to those bigger plays on third down, and that was something echoed by Coach Urban Meyer with the Jags racking up seven penalties for 54 yards. He said those were self-inflicted wounds that hurt big, and he says Trevor has to calm down, look for them to make some easy throws for Trevor starting out the second half. Yeah, AJ, I'm betting Urban Meyer was not grinning ear to ear at halftime as the handoff goes to Carlos Hyde. And the Jaguars try to get something started here in the second half. Well, yeah, and they, they've got to go with the running game. That, that has to be a big part of it because right now, Lovey Smith and his defense, he's dropping his defense back. He's playing zone. And if you're Jacksonville, you've got to get him out of that. You've got to make him pay for that. And the way you do that is run the football and force them to change their defensive looks because right now, they're reading Trevor Lawrence, and they're going to make it awfully difficult for him to find those windows. Right now, Justin Reed is the Houston Texan down on the field. They're taking a look at him. We'll take a quick break and come right back after this. 
Sarah. When we left you, Justin Reed was the injured Texan. He was able to walk off the field. He's been replaced by Terrence Brooks and is looking for all the world like he'll be back in there as soon as possible. Second and five for Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. This is Hyde, and Hyde going nowhere, wrapped up by Zach Cunningham, who has been a tackling machine in past years for this Houston Texans team. 163 tackles to lead the squad a year ago. Yep, and in this defense, in this scheme, extremely linebacker friendly. And you're going to see if they play it right, these linebackers, they're going to be downhill. They're going to play fast, and they're going to get chances to make a lot of tackles around the line of scrimmage and in the backfield. So you get a different look now. Man to man. On third and five. Lawrence, quick pass, and that is complete to LaVisca Chenault. But that is short of a first down, and that'll bring the punting unit. So the main problem, and a lot of it is stepping on their own foot, Arch, is that uh, yeah. Jacksonville Jacksonville just can't get any momentum going. No, not at all. And again, I said it right before halftime, I'm really interested to see Lawrence and how he responds here in the second half. They've got to dig themselves out of a big hole. A lot of passing situation. Let's see if the game speeds up or if he can slow it back down. Andre Roberts dodges the first tackler and then goes down at about Oh, about the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. Dakota Allen making the tackle. Hey, we ask you to help support Hurricane Ida recovery efforts in the Gulf and in the Northeast. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid on authentic and game-worn items and support the Gulf Coast Renewal Fund and American Red Cross. Text IDA to 90999 to donate $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Ida Relief. Philip Lindsay in the backfield now as Tyrod Taylor goes back to work here in the second half. This is Lindsay. To the 31, and we go down to AJ. Well, Greg, the Saints marched into TIAA Bank Field to power out to all of New Orleans, and the, C uh, the city, rather, is still recovering. Although the Superdome didn't sustain any significant damages, those outages made it impossible for them to host this one at home. So the Jags have been more than accommodating, and this is supposed to be temporary with the Saints on the road week two and week three. They could ideally be back home week four, guys. All right, AJ, thank you. Your Saints were marching in, but not go unnoticed. Four, four, single. Out, four, we go. Ingram, right side. Not a whole lot there. His, his progress will be marked uh, to about the 34-yard line, and the tackle was made by Caleb on Chasen. That is Shad Kami, owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a really nice man. Have you met him? Uh, I've met him a couple times. I haven't had a chance to have big conversation, but I love his story. I love his background. I mean, that's, if you get a chance, that's what it's all about living the American dream. Lucky yeah. four, one, lucky four, one. Third and four. Taylor throwing sideline. That is complete, and that's enough for a first down to Nico Collins, the rookie out of Michigan. Third round draft pick. Get a big target, six foot four, and this is what you want to be able to see. Does he have what it takes to beat press coverage? And he's matched up with Shaquille Griffin, who hasn't had quite the debut I think he would have liked to against this Houston football team. They've gone at him all day. This is David Johnson. And Johnson out of bounds. Looks to be about a yard short of another first down. They'll mark him out at midfield. So it'll be second and one. Greg, to me, it looks like, you know, Jacksonville, their defense is, is just a step slow. You know, they've really upgraded their team speed. The secondary, they've got fast linebackers. But to me, they're not playing fast. They, they seem to be behind, and they really struggle in their man-to-man -man situation, especially when they get the formations in tight. This is Ingram, and Ingram, with a second effort, still doesn't make first down yardage, just got it back to the line of scrimmage. 
And maybe it's that maybe it's that half a step slow that that's, that's giving the Texans that look of, of being really in rhythm at this point. Well, and I think when you look at it inside Malcolm Brown, they're stout. They're actually doing a pretty good job inside in the run game. But the linebackers in secondary, they haven't been on the same page and have had a ton of communication problems here. Ingram looking for the first down, and from here he looks short. So now here comes the punting unit. I got to ask you, when you're leading 27 to 7 and you've got fourth and one, would this not be a good time to take a shot for a first down and keep the pressure on? Are, are you crazy? Why? Greg, are you crazy? <laughs> Come on, man. Me and you, my... you know what? The last thing you want to do is give Jacksonville and Lawrence the ball in the 50 yard line. Me and my vast coaching experience tells me this would be a decent shot to take. You're a legend because you take <laughs> risks. I know, I know. I just... Jamal Agnew with a fair catch at his own 11 yard line. Trevor Lawrence will be happy <laughs> to get the ball back. A new home. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Corona Extra. Find the fine life. Live La Vida Masfina. And by Buffalo Wild Wings. To the greatest of all times. Urban Meyer brings that winning culture to Jacksonville. Three Division I FBS national titles at the collegiate level, twice with Florida, once with Ohio State. On first down from their own 11, and Lawrence on the move. Incomplete. Coaches uh, moving from the college level to the NFL don't automatically get a Super Bowl title. Pete Carroll did it, Jimmy Johnson did it, Barry Switzer did it. There are eight other coaches who have not yeah. won a Super Bowl and won a national championship. Yeah, it's different. Well, look, when Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer were coaching, that was football was an entirely different animal back then. You know, especially college football, how much it's changed. You know, the modern game is so different. I really respect and love Pete Carroll as a coach and love how he's handled the Seattle Seahawks. He still, you, you, you look at him and you hear him, and he still kind of has that collegiate feel about him at times. Yeah, but boy, he understands and knows exactly what it takes at every single position group in the NFL, what winning techniques look like. And he knows how to relate to and how to get grown men who are really good at their job how to buy into the team's culture. Trevor Lawrence, by the way, began this game completing 9 of 15. Since then, he is 1 out of 8 for 6 yards and 2 interceptions. Third and 7 now, staring him in the face. Looks like an all-out blitz, but the backers drop out. Got rid of it. This is Robinson out of the backfield. Down short of the 20-yard line, short of a first down, and here comes the punting unit. Yeah, Lovey Smith loves to do this with his linebackers. Everybody is showing blitz and man-to-man. -man. So Trevor Lawrence thinks this is a man look. But on the snap, they're going to all drop out and play zone. So he's got to make a quick decision, get the ball out. By that time, the rush is there. And he has to throw it and get, about, get it out of his hands. And the Texans are off the field. Logan Cook to kick it away. Andre Roberts deep. Bounces at the 45 and takes a Jacksonville roll inside the 35 yard line to about the 32. Lovey Smith liking the way his defense is looking today. So, if you have a flip. University of Houston campus, a nearly two-ton steel beam from one of the World Trade Center towers standing as a memorial to those who lost their lives on 9-11 20 years ago. On first down, David Johnson. And Johnson stood up at about the 37-yard line.
Malcolm Brown coming out of the pack with the football. That's not going to count. Second and five. Yeah. Lindsay. And Lindsay has run out of bounds. What a wonderful situation for the Houston Texans and Tim Kelly, their offensive coordinator. If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, you think they're going to try to run out the clock. And he can pick and choose on how he wants to throw the ball. Well, yeah, but you would love, you know, you don't want to get stagnant here. You still got seven minutes left here in the third quarter. And so I don't know. Of course, you don't want to be, you know, super aggressive and, and make some big mistakes and give Jacksonville a chance to get back in the game. But, you know, I think. Like going for it on fourth and one? Yes. <laughs> yes. I got you. Here's third and two. Tyrod Taylor didn't like what he saw and called timeout. His play clock was winding down. You know it's amazing though, Greg, when when you look, go back and look at that first half, Houston scored 27 points. Would you believe it if I told you that was the first time in the first half, they've scored 27 points or more in the last four seasons oh. in the first half. Can you believe that? Think about that. Well, it's it's it borders on being unbelievable simply because Deshaun Watson was at the <laughs> That's helm. That's my point. Yeah. But I, I know that right now, Texan fans, they're not in agreement because all those slow starts, I mean, it was painful to watch. They would always have to try and turn it on in the fourth quarter. One of the worst starting football teams that I've seen in recent memory. But who would have thought coming into this game, you know, with all the different roster transactions, all the different people that are coming in, putting all this together, no Deshaun Watson, no Will Fuller, and here you are, 27 points here in the first half. Pretty well done. Third and two with David Johnson in the backfield. Johnson with the handoff. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. He appears to have enough for the first down to about the 43 yard line and it is yeah well I'm all for grinding it out and running out the clock and but I would love to see them open it up a little bit more here I think now that they got that first first down expect them to maybe get Taylor outside the pocket and throw the ball downfield a bit Pharaoh Brown with the catch and time for another update from New York. Let's take you back to JB and Booker. Hey, Greg, Kenny G at running back. Well, it's not that Kenny G. It's Kenneth Gainwell. How about the Eagles right now? 22 to 6 over the Atlanta Falcons. Gainwell takes it in. Jalen Hurts, 22 of 29, 205 yards and two touchdowns. Not bad for the young look or a quarterback out of Alabama. Hey, well, here's a well known name back to Greg G. Yes. Gee. Here's a burst up the middle by Ingram. Mark Ingram with a first down to the Jacksonville 43-yard line. Brought down by Ray Sean Jenkins. That's an 11-yard pickup. You get a chance to make the tackle in the hole. This is one-on-one -on -one football. You've got to make it. I know that's a tough tackle for the safety winger, but he takes a bad angle, and Ingram makes him miss in the hole. Look how he finishes. Ingram, 15 carries, 48 yards. Ingram again. There aren't many running backs that get to their 11th year of a career running the football in this league. He's doing a great job. <laughs> Not at all. You know, I was coming into this game, we knew that he was going to be the lead back. But right now, he's got 15 carries, and I didn't quite expect him to carry this much of the load, but hey, he's got a lot of juice left in that body. Ingram again. As we hit the four and a half minute mark to go here in the third quarter. And Ingram comes to the sideline now for a breather. 
Houston with 98 rushing yards on the day last year. They averaged about 91 and a half. You got to be heads up if you're Jacksonville for some sort of a pass or bootleg hey, coming alert, behind alert, the line of scrimmage hey, or Taylor coming out of the backfield Scorpion. here. Scorpion, Blue Lady. Where's that? Under pressure. Got rid of it. Caught. Farrell Brown, what a catch down the middle of the field. It'll be first and goal. We have a penalty marker down. What a catch by Brown. What a throw. Oh, what a man. throw by Tyron Taylor. Holy man. Excuse me. No penalty marker. 29-yard pickup. Ingram giving the ball. Touchdown. Philip Lindsay. What a day for Tyrod Taylor. What a grab. Farrell Brown, first time starter in his career, six foot six on third and one. Taylor under pressure, and then Philip Lindsay caps it off. Wow. Slide's extra point is perfect. 324 to play in the third. It's a Houston Texas runaway. 7. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Consumer Cellular. Here at NRG Stadium, the fans they probably came in hoping for the best. Don't know if they <laughs> don't know if they expected this, but they're pleasantly surprised, I guess. 34-7. You never know, right? That's what the, the offseason, you never know until you get out there and you play on opening week. Touchback means they'll start from the 25. And we remind you, Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time, the SEC on CBS features a marquee matchup in the swamp. Number one, Alabama. Number 13, Florida. We get set for kickoff beginning at 2.30 with the drive to Atlanta, followed by college football today. It's all coming up Saturday here on CBS. So Urban Meyer trying to figure out what buttons he can push. The last five drives that Jaguars have had, Ugh. a total of 12 yards, no first downs, one interception. Yeah, ugly, ugly football. And again, it's going to get real tough now because you're in essence going to turn into a one-dimensional offense here for the rest of the game. Had to get rid of it in a hurry and still completed that to O'Shaughnessy. That was Charles O'Menahue making his presence felt and introducing himself to Trevor Lawrence. So now you notice here in the second half, the Texans defense up front, they've been able to turn it up a notch because the secondary, the Jacksonville hasn't been able to get them out of their zone. The secondary is getting to their drops. Their eyes are on the football. And now up front, they're unleashing all their games and just getting after the passer. Second and 13, that pass is complete. And that's O'Shaughnessy once again. Time for another update. Let's see if we get any musical references this time from JB and Boone. I'll keep it straight. 13 unanswered for Pittsburgh. Watch his catch by Deontay Johnson. Levi Wallace for the Bills is right there. He comes down with a five yard touchdown pass. 13 straight points scored by Pittsburgh Daily. 13 10 over the Bills. Back to Greg Gumble. All right, guys. Thank you. That pass is completed to James Robinson. And we have a penalty marker in the backfield. Here's Land Clark. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 97. A 15 yard penalty will be at the end of the play with an automatic first down. And that's Malik Collins with this hit on Lawrence. Mm. Nah, I don't know, Greg. Tough one. Really? You didn't think so. 
Yeah. You defensive guys are within, all alike. Yeah, what's was, wrong with that? Look, when you're in the pit within one step, I think it's tough. I mean, yeah. look, I get it. So you're going to lose most of those calls yeah. if you're a defensive lineman, yeah. but it is tough. Green 80. Meanwhile, a first down. Green is up. From the 41. Lawrence with time. Throwing deep. Has a man and he's got a touchdown. <laughs> DJ Chark on the receiving end. 41 yards. Boy, look at the action. As Lawrence comes out, watch the safety start to drift with him, and then he just launches a rocket. Beautiful pass. The safety, he can't recover in time and just gets it to drop into Chark's hands. Boy, that's how you execute the play action. His longest connection of the day. Lambeau's extra point attempt is good. 148 to play in the third. And Jacksonville makes it 14 on the board for the Jaguars. Mm, mm, mm. Really nice job by Lawrence getting the safety. I believe that was Justin Reed. He flows over to the left and then he just can't get over in time. Beautiful pass and Chark. Chark hasn't had the cleanest day at the office today. But boy, when they needed him right there. What a drive. Four plays, 75 yards. That's exactly what Urban Meyer is looking for. In only a minute 36. Second touchdown pass of the day for Trevor Lawrence, his longest completion of the day at 41. Well, he, I mean, he has, he can throw every ball. I know he's been broken down ad nauseum. I'm not not adding any new insight to the equation here. The boy, he is talented. <laughs> no matter what happens, you never forget your first day, right? You never forget your first anything. Two yards deep in the end zone, Andre Roberts. Hit it about the 24 and about the 22. Let's talk about your first career game. Yeah, NFL buddy. NFL game with the St. Louis Rams against the Philadelphia Eagles, week one of the 2001 uh -huh. season. Adam Archuleta recovering a fumble. Yeah. And then fumbled the football on the return. Hey, you're not supposed to say that. Okay, we'll just watch. There we go. <laughs> Hey, my, my knee was down. That's right. Okay. He, you helped yeah, the Rams. About, oh, there you go. 20 to 17 win in overtime. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Well, you know how to make people feel good about themselves. Did, you, did anybody ever tell you you have a way with that? Yeah. <laughs> I take extra classes. <laughs> this is Mark Ingram. Ingram continuing to be the workhorse. I can't believe that was 20 years ago. 20 years. You just wait, wait till you get a little older, time really begins to fly. Is that how it goes? <laughs> and, and your memory isn't as sharp. <laughs> Second and eight. And you run once again. We are under minutes to play here in the third. Mark Ingram now with 19 carries for 63 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, I think Houston, they what they just went over the 100-yard uh, mark here. You know, the running game, probably for good reason, has been an afterthought here in Houston. There's no doubt that it's going to be a centerpiece, but maybe not if Taylor plays the way he plays today all year. Tyrod Taylor throws. Is incomplete. Brandon Cooks, who's had a pretty good day himself, couldn't come up with that catch. It's fourth down, and here comes the punting unit. You know, I love fun facts. I love trivia, Greg. You know, I gave you that little nugget about the uh, the Texans and their first half points in the last four years. You yeah. know, that's Brandon Cooks. That's his best first half of his entire career. 
his best. Pretty good. Not bad. Jamal Agnew deep. Line drive kick. Drifts back to his 20. Circles around looking for blocking. Not getting there. He is very forward progress is going to be marked at about the 21 yard line. Down to AJ. Well, Greg, Texans coach David Culley says he couldn't have walked into a better situation with Lovey Smith and Romeo Cornell by his side. Culley says he almost worked for Lovey before when he had an offensive coordinator position open in Chicago, and he's known him since high school. And of course, Romeo has had a long tenured career in this league, and they both have great knowledge and experience. So they've just been a great support to Culley as he tries to redefine the identity of this Texans team. And if you want to call it the Lovey effect, I know it's something you can personally attest to, Arch, playing for him in St. Louis in Chicago. Lawrence with time throwing down the sideline and overthrows DJ Chark. Yeah, you've got a you've got a special place in your heart for Lovey Smith, don't you? Oh, you know what I do. You know, he he I would say that he's been the most impactful person for me professionally that I've ever come in contact with. Yeah, I just I had a great relationship with him. I still have a great relationship and Things are a little different now. He's not a head coach. He's back and he's hands on as the defensive coordinator. Ryan. That man knows a lot of football and he sure knows how to get players to play at their best. Go. Second and 10. Lawrence over the middle and that's complete. And you know, AJ mentioned Romeo Cornell. I do not know of a single person in the planet on the planet who dislikes Romeo Cornell. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> End of three here in Houston. The Texans on a roll. They lead it. We're coming back for the fourth of this. Can you order Dominic? Along with our producer, Jonathan Siegel, our director, Mark Grant, Greg Gumbel, Adam Archuleta, AJ Ross, as we start the fourth quarter, 34 14 Houston with the lead. And a third and three for Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. Rid of it, throwing too high, Ooh. incomplete, intended for Chark. The same look. You see Lovey Smith right there, smiling, pleased with the way his defense is playing, but it's the same look. That is so hard on an offense when you put your linebackers up there, and it just makes you. It makes you get confused with the protection and not knowing exactly what the coverage is going to be. It made Lawrence hold the ball and just not enough window to throw it in. Andre Roberts makes the fair catch. Meanwhile, we talked about, you know, here's the thing about this Houston team. You know, everybody said, well, how is Tyrod Taylor going to do replacing Sean Watson? But if Tyrod can throw the ball. It was that running game that everybody wants to know about. And they've kept five running backs on the roster, and four of them are active today. But here it is. Each of them brings something extremely unique and something that you really have to think about as a defensive coordinator. So we knew the offense was going to be built around the running game and the running backs. And again, if Taylor, he does this every week, then I think Texan fans are going to be pretty happy. My four, my four, four. Ingram once again in the backfield. Fake to him. Taylor throws incomplete. Pharaoh Brown. And here's a late flag being thrown from the near side. And it's going to go against Jacksonville. That's an Defense number 26. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. That's Shaquille Griffin. Boy, Jacksonville has done itself no favors <laughs> with the penalties they've committed today. No, sloppy, sloppy football. And Griffin, one of the main acquisitions coming over from Seattle, has had a tough day at the office. You see a slight little jersey pull right there on the outside. Hey, Mike is 5 4, Blue Lady. Where's that? Ingram, right side. Midfield and down and out of bounds at about the 47. Last season, Jacksonville 
over six and a half penalties a game on the average. They've committed eight today. Yeah, one more time, the tight ends again. A huge part of the running game. And if you want to run the ball and be effective at it and be a dominant running offense, you can't do it without some blocking tight ends. We've seen that over and over again today from this group. Hey, no, no, no. 54 is mine. What's it? What's it? 44 is mine. Blue 80. What's that? Second and one. This is Lindsay. Lindsay loses yardage. Back to the 49 yard line. Miles Jack. Great. That's, that's one of the first times today I've heard you say losing yardage when talking about the Houston offense. And to me, we haven't talked enough about the Jacksonville defense, you know, stepping up and making individual plays, right? Creating those negative plays. Here we are in the fourth quarter, and that's really the first time I've seen anybody in the Houston Texan offensive backfield. Yeah, you're saying we haven't talked about it because it hasn't happened. Exactly. Third and five now. Taylor going to run for it. Short of the 20 yard line. We have a penalty marker down. Let's see if this is on Rayshon Jenkins. After the play. Personal foul, late hit, defense number yeah. two. Has to get to the goal, first down. Kind of a late push more than a late hit. He gave him the extra shove. That's, yeah. But listen, Jacksonville's going to crash, and that means there's nobody outside to keep contained. I think today that Taylor has done a marvelous job of feeling the rush and understanding where to escape. You know, we've seen him keep the eyes down the field and, and launch it. That time, he sees the open lane, makes the rookie miss, and all of a sudden, he's racing to the sideline. Here's Ingram. And Ingram pushing his way to about the six-and-a-half-yard line. And once again, Houston knocking on the door. you got to be pleased if you're David Culley and the way this offense came out prepared to play this game. It's, it's kind of a blend of what they did in Baltimore last season and also with Tim Kelly, the, the offensive coordinator, what he kind of did last year. So they tried to blend this thing together. Who knew how it was going to turn out, but you've got to be extremely pleased. They look sharp. Their level of execution for game one of the season with all these new pieces is really high. Taylor looking in zone. Complete. Nico Collins, the intended receiver. It'll be third and six. These Texans travel to Cleveland next week, and so do we. Mm. See a little bit about uh, the uh, Cleveland run game. Boy, I love. I love me some Nick Chubb. I love watching that guy. There's a lot to like about that Cleveland team. Third and six now. Taylor under pressure, throwing incomplete. At the goal line, Jordan Aikens, nearest one to it, and here comes the field goal unit. Well, in a position where if you're if your regular starter is injured, you're kind of hoping for the best, and that is place kicker. But Joey Sly has done pretty <laughs> well today. Yeah, I would say so. I think you'd have to be pretty happy with his performance. The special teams here has gotten a huge upgrade from where they were last season. They feel really good about where that unit is. He's been good from 40 and good from 26. This one from 25 yards out. And good. 11.56. On the clock, Trevor Lawrence looking up at the scoreboard, not liking what he sees. Little oxygen for Mark Ingram, 21 carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown today. 
anchoring the ground game. It's pretty pretty good day at work, wouldn't you say? Let's just say he'll sleep well tonight. The yeah, Texans, they're at 147 yards rushing. I think David Culley will take that in the heart. Joey Sly doing what he does best. It's another touchback. Well, Trevor Lawrence losing is not, not a very commonplace thing for him. Not at all. He is he's virtually been the best ever since he stepped on the field. And and that's just those four losses, those are in playoffs or championship games. His regular season record, he's 68 0. So he knows nothing about losing whatsoever. Now, of course. You know, this is the NFL, so what's going to happen? And he's going to take his lumps. Got tremendous upside, but I'm sure you can relate to having a great record like that, Greg. I can relate to you don't look taking like my lumps. <laughs> I don't think you're, you're used to losing either, are you? First down, Lawrence. And this is O'Shaughnessy. So, Lawrence has had some moments. had some great moments and then he's had some mistakes that are to be expected this one tries to thread it in between zone coverage but then I love how he bounced back later on a couple drives later throws a beauty for Chark on second and one he'll get the first down here this is O'Shaughnessy once again but it it's gonna be a journey you know I keep going back to it Greg we we've spoke about you know, Josh Allen to me is the guy that just jumps out. A, a guy that his rookie season was as rough as anybody I can remember. And even his second season left you with serious questions on whether or not he could be the guy. And then all of a sudden last year, bam, right? So it's really tough to tell even after a, a whole year and a body of work. That is Vincent Taylor, number 96 for Houston. The fifth year D lineman out of Oklahoma State. And he appears to be in some pain. So this always brings me back to you look at a 37 14. You'd consider that a comfortable lead. Uh, the question is, when does a coach begin to rotate his players more than he usually does? We'll talk about that. The FanDuel Third by Direct TV Stream. Get your TV together. FanDuel. Make every moment more. And by McDonald's. Back to Houston, everyone. Vincent Taylor was carted off the field. And uh, if we get any word on him, we will certainly pass it on to you. Roy Lopez has replaced him on the defensive line for the Texans. First and ten for Jacksonville. Lawrence throwing sideline incomplete. Second and ten. out of the backfield you can see that just you know, use the, the phrase being on the same page and the communication and just you know feeling whether or not the receiver is going inside or if you're gonna throw it to the backside it's happened a few times with his receivers and also with Robinson they just need a lot of, a lot more work and more practice but they haven't been in sync in the passing game today and right through the hands of James Robinson. And the 
punting unit once again. We were talking with Urban Meyer about James Robinson. I asked him, how does a guy with as much talent as he showed in his first year last year get through a whole draft without being <laughs> without being picked? And he said, the draft? How about scouting? Yep. Well, you know what it is? It really comes down to height and 40-yard dash. He's 5'9", and he runs like a 4'6", 4'6", 540. And so... How about this? Yeah, going for it on fourth and ten, and now a couple of late Texans onto the field, and it looks like they're going to call timeout. I know you're in the position of nothing to lose, right, at this point. But, boy, fourth and ten, when you've really struggled to move the football, your chances of picking this up. I know you're just kind of waving the white towel if you punt it away, but. Well, at the same time, though, it, 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 does it, doesn't, it, doesn't it give you as a head coach a chance to see what you've got, what your guys are made of, how you go after it? Your fourth and ten playbook? Yeah. Oh, there's such a thing. Yeah, there it, is. It's the, four and, the fourth and thirties that are, <laughs> that are few and far between. Texans fans increase the noise level. Imagine you're going to get a secondary that's pretty spread out for Houston. Yep. Get those linebackers deep. See if Lovey Smith puts his linebackers at the line of scrimmage again. Get Lawrence to try and hold the ball account. Lawrence stepping up, throwing hit his man. Across midfield to the 46-yard line. That's LaVisca Chenault for a first down. There's the fourth and ten playbook. There's the fourth and ten play. Boy, this is a really nice rep. Lawrence, there was a lot of heat in that pocket. It was closing in on him, and he just stepped up and hit a tight window to Chenault to pick it up. Lawrence with the flip to Robinson. Holds on to this one and looking for another first down. That was Terrence Mitchell with the hit right there that forced the fumble. And that's that's got to be he's had a couple drops already today. And then that one going out of bounds. Just an overall sloppy performance from this offense. One second and one. That pass is intercepted right in the middle of the field by Christian Kirksey. Third pick of the day thrown by the rookie quarterback for Jacksonville. This one talked about not being on the same page. I think he's trying to hit Chenault, who's way over here. But Trevor Lawrence throws it right to the Texans. I have no clue whatsoever. And it looked like he threw it, and he ripped it pretty confidently, but... That one wasn't even in the same zip code. You know, Lovey Smith, they say that his scheme is simple, right? That it doesn't have a lot of volume. But boy, the way they train their linebackers and their DBs to read the quarterback, as good as anyone in football. That's Philip Lindsay on the far side of the field. This is amazing. Given, given the fact that it that it's all rookie at quarterback, the fact is this Houston team had three interceptions all of last season. Sure. And they've got three today. Yeah, and let's let's be honest. They're not facing, you know, a juggernaut of an offense. And you know that, look, Lawrence in his first game, he's gonna make some mistakes, right? So it's not gonna always be like this, but you still you play who you play, right? And the fact that they've been able to get their hands on the football is a really good sign. Pass to the far side. That's Brandon Cooks. And Cooks across the 30 and about a yard short of a first down. See, that's and what having... There's a late flag and a little tussle. That's the centered Justin Britt. And now things are getting a little chippy
It's the first time in the two days that we've talked to David Culley that uh, haven't seen him smile. The officials talk this over and find out who's guilty of what. Oh, yeah. Robertson Harris comes in with a little headbutt. Just tells me he doesn't like money. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, that, that headbutt's not worth ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 fine, is it? Does that get you a FedEx delivery? <laughs> I mean, come on. Cooks with the catch. And the center, yep. Justin Britt there Britt, on the outside. Britt and, uh, and Rayshon Jenkins. So here comes the decision. There are multiple fouls on the play. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary repetitions. Offense number 68, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 95, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 44. It was all offset. Third down. By the way, do you like the whole idea with the numbers thing that anybody can wear any number they want? I don't. I don't either. I, I, I'm old fashioned, you know. Are you old fashioned? In many ways. Yeah. You strike me as old fashioned yeah. too. Something about a defensive lineman wearing a single digit. Yeah, that number six is Jihad Ward. <laughs> <laughs> linebacker. This just tells me that he always wanted to play tight end <laughs> or receiver, and he was always the biggest kid, and they stuck yeah. him on the line. Third and one. The give is to Ingram, and Ingram looks like he's right at that first down marker. Let's see how far they give him. And they're going to bring out the punting unit. Even though they only have this far to go, Arch. Yeah, well, you got to go into that, that Greg Gumble <laughs> aggressive. You must like to play Madden and go for it every time, right? I don't play video games. No? No. But... As I told you before, I think if you can't make a yard when you don't need it, you don't deserve to win the game. That's true. Jamal Agnew, fair catch called for and made inside his own 25-yard line. 7.41 to play here in the fourth. Coming up next, game two of our NFL on CBS doubleheader. Most of you will see Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns battle Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Others will watch the Miami Dolphins renew their AFC East rivalry with the New England Patriots. More of the NFL on CBS coming up next. As I mentioned earlier, Arch will see those Cleveland Browns yeah. next week as they host these Houston Texans. Looks like the Jets, what, they're, they're behind against Carolina, so Trey Lance gets his one attempt. Nice day at the office, and really interested to see what Matt Jones brings to the table in his first start. Yeah. This is Carlos Hyde, and Carlos Hyde about a yard short of first down as he reaches the 33. You know, against this style of defense, you, you have got to have a good running game because you've got to give the linebackers something to think about. If you let them just drop in pass coverage and set their feet on the quarterback and read the quarterback's on the quarterback and read the quarterback's ability and the movement skills to be that in this defense. Now, he didn't have a great year last year, but Bobby Smith thinks that he has what it takes. Lawrence dragged down from behind by Whitney Merciless.
This look still giving Jacksonville a lot of problems, creating one-on-one -on -one matchups. You just see Merciless, he just keeps fighting the hands of Cam Robinson, turns the corner, and then just hits the acceleration to get to Lawrence. But that's a look. Time and time again in this game with the backers up in the line that has really given this Jacksonville offense something to think about. Third and 23. Completed on the outside. Carlos Hyde for not very much, certainly not nearly enough. And Terrence Mitchell with the tackle. Here comes the punting team. I'm going to wager Lovey Smith did not have that beard when you played for him. No, he was clean cut. You know, he was a young buck back then, really. 20 years. Hey, five years in college football? That'll make you grow a beard now. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll come out gray. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Andre Roberts. And Roberts hit hard at the 20-yard line and goes down. Chappelle Russell. Well, no, you said clean cut, but you know that's pretty well kept. No, that's well kept. But tell, look, like, that, that's spending time on the road recruiting, and you're like, man, I'm just gonna grow a beard. I, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this. <clears throat> Boy, what a history he has to him. Huh? Man knows how to coach in football. So here's Mark Ingram back in the backfield. And back at it off the left side with a little running room. So Tyrod Taylor, he's looking pretty good so far. Oh, not a bad day at the office. 19 for 31, 281 yards. His awareness has really been the thing that stood out to me in this game. The way he's navigated the pocket, the way he's felt the rush, the way he's kept his eyes down the field, and then showing that, you know what? I've been in this league a long time, but I still have the juice in my legs to make you respect my game on the ground. What a game and what a week one for Tyrod Taylor. And look, we, we, we can almost guarantee there are a fair number of Houston Texans fans who basically went, what are we going to do without Deshaun Watson in the lineup? Yeah, didn't you? I mean, let's... Let's be honest, Deshaun Watson, top five quarterback. Oh, easily. Right? Easy. And so that's the guy you think is going to be here for 10, 15 years. So many times last season, I watched Deshaun Watson have his game, team in the game. And they had, in a game they had no business being into. It was just simply on the basis of his talent. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, you know, you're going to be disappointed because of everything that's happened with Deshaun Watson, right? And coming into this season, you know, everybody's always optimistic in the offseason about what you have in front of you. There wasn't a lot of optimism outside the building here looking at the Texans football team. I think they're, they're not favored in every single game. They're an underdog in every single game. They were not favored here today. Exactly. And so the expectations, super low. And again, it's going to be a tough year. It's going to be an up and down season. But again, you got to love how they came out ready to play. Third and four. forecast what might happen down the road. I don't think you can do that in this situation with Deshaun Watson and with the Houston Texans. Nobody really knows how this is going to go. No. I mean, it's it's in a, it's, it's in a whole different world when you talk about the legal stuff. You know, it'd be pretty irresponsible to try and prognosticate what's going to happen, right? So, you know, obviously if he's found guilty, then it's a moot point, right? We know what's going to happen. If he's innocent and he's cleared of all charges, well, that's when things start to get real interesting. Here's Ingram. Jacksonville defense slams that side of the field shut. 345 to play here in the fourth. But the fact that this has been an offseason story, whether it's demanding a trade or whether it's the legal stuff that has popped up, 
the Texans have pretty much planned on Taylor and moving on from Deshaun Watson. So it's not as if this is something that just happened in the summer or during training camp. You know, Tyrod Taylor has pretty much known the entire offseason that he was, in fact, going to be the guy and practiced with his teammates as the guy. And therein lies the advantage for the Texans. To this point, anyway, Ingram on the right side. To about the 35 yard line. And Jacksonville calls a timeout. And the clock has stopped with 3.04 to play. Not the storybook beginning that Jacksonville fans had hoped for. But the upside is huge. Did you think it was going to be a storybook beginning? I think it's hard to tell because no matter how talented a quarterback can be, a lot depends on, like we talked about all day long, the running game. A lot yeah. depends on how, how well that offensive line is going to, to protect them. A lot depends on the receivers, whether they hold the passes or drop them. <laughs> That's a good point. If I was disappointed in, in one thing, well, two things today, it'd be the operation and the mistakes and just the silly illegal procedure, illegal formation penalties. And, and I'm disappointed in the way the defense came out to play. I, I really thought we'd see a fast, aggressive, pressure the quarterback defense, but I, I feel like they've been a step behind all game. This is Amendola. Danny Amendola has had himself a heck of a debut day for the for the Houston Texans. Yeah, that's what happens when you play, you know, in your hometown. How about that? Welcome home, Danny. Yes, yeah. sir. Five catches, 34 yards, and a touchdown. So on fourth and three, Jacksonville uses its third and final timeout. And there's some value in bringing in a guy who has been a winner in the past and knows how to go about winning football games. Speaking about Amendola, hmm. absolutely. Well, they look, they needed a slot receiver. You know, they got rid of Kiki QT in the offs or here in training camp and in the preseason. Anthony Miller is really the only other true slot receiver. So they really needed somebody with some experience that they could plug in there and that could be a reliable target for Tyron Taylor. Cameron Johnston to kick it away. Agnew watches this one float out of bounds somewhere near the 10 or 15 yard line. It's going to be marked out at the 15. So Lawrence on the day, 21 of 41 for 248 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Yep, and I guarantee you, at least I, I would hope, that coming into this game, Urban Meyer doesn't want to see 41 passing attempts in game one, right? You've got to have balance. You know, it kind of reminds me of Joe Burrow last year for Cincinnati. They couldn't run the football, right? Yep. Well, he took a lot of hits. And he didn't finish the season, but they've got to find a way to have balance. Not have so many negative plays, but they've got to help Lawrence out. And as you said, it'll be interesting to see how he reacts to this, how he comes out of this. Because there might be a fair number of guys out there going, okay, be careful. You don't want to make him angry. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half to play. Second and ten. His man across the 30 and out of bounds at about the 34 yard line, DJ Chark. Jaguars will go home and prepare to host the Denver Broncos next week. Arizona the week after that before traveling to Cincinnati. And this, this Jacksonville team, by the way, just remember this. They won their season opener last year. They beat the Indianapolis Colts and then lost their last 15. Yeah, I was on that game and really kind of shocked the Colts because the Colts were one of the favorites right in the AFC to start the season. Oh. But this is Chenault. And the Texans defense stands him up. And that may be the last play prior to the two minute warning. 
Uh, let's see if they get the snap off in time. They did not. Two minutes to play. Houston 37, Jacksonville 14. Back to Houston in the moment. The next 10 years. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. 5G built right. And by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. and Houston we've got technical difficulties Jacksonville at Houston Houston on top 37 14 two minutes left in regulation is what we see there Boomer talk about that matchup you know at the bottom line at the end of the day it's all about Trevor Lawrence and his continued growth he's thrown three interceptions today right now as they're just trying to end the game here you don't want any injuries uh, for sure you think about Trevor he was uh, 25 of 46 for 288 yards two touchdown passes that were really good throws but three bad interceptions yeah for sure and some would say at this point in the game you know take the young man out but but I like this take your lumps learn how to finish the game out um, let's try to get in the end zone and if you can end on a touchdown as you see him thrown over the middle of the field where he struggled to make some plays during the game is right in between those numbers coach the, 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 the coverages that NFL defenses can mix up that can confuse young rookies like we saw up against Trevor and it's a growing experience you know what it's like made in this game because it's the speed of the game it's regular season and really I, the, the impressive thing to me was Tyler Taylor mm. he came in with that Houston team and David Culley they played a lot of guys in the preseason they came in ready to play this game and they clearly had the more experience Experience and they played the more efficient game for him. Yeah, Lovey Smith did some nice things against Trevor Lawrence. You know, Lovey's been around a long time. A little bit. You can tell oh, by that gonna... beer. <laughs> well, that beer, too, yes. But you know, Trevor Lawrence, you learn from what he's doing, learning if you look how the defense follows you. But, you know, I'm happy for Tyrod Taylor. When's the last time he played, it's been a long time, where you would have to look over his shoulder yeah, because right. there's somebody behind him. So he did a great job today and really a big win for the Houston Texans. And again, as we said, we've lost all power at the time that you may see there, two minutes left. It is actually about 24 seconds remaining in that contest. And you can see these last two plays, and this is right before the flag was thrown. <clears throat> Houston is not sitting back. They're blitzing. <laughs> Lovey Smith is blitzing Trevor Lawrence. So, as Nate was just pointing out, it is a very good learning experience for the young quarterback. You want to finish the game. And, you know, Lovey is just not sitting back there letting him pick his defense apart. Yeah, for sure. As we uh, are looking at this game, Houston is up 37 to 14. And, guys, we have to talk about this offseason for the Houston Texans. There's a lot going on. Now, think about it. With all the, the the media coverage uh, surrounding Deshaun Watson and what's going on, um, players being shipped off to different places. Coach, this team could have easily packed it in. This coaching staff could have said, you know what, it's just not our year. Yeah. They showed up ready to rock and roll today. And you're seeing Trevor Lawrence make some really good throws right here, utilizing the sideline, and also getting a feel.
for the game clock and managing a two-minute situation, something he really never had experience doing at Clemson. They never came down to games being at <laughs> the right. So, I mean, even for Urban Meyer. But you're right. When you're talking about the Houston Texans, I mean, the one thing I'll say, you know what, Nate? Low expectation. At the same time, they're coming in under the radar. They're going to pass incomplete in the end zone there for Trevor trying to get that last-minute touchdown and finish the game on a positive note. Hey, you know, this time of the game, take no chances if you're a quarterback boomer, right? This don't throw, don't be. What do you mean by that? You're, you're, you're not going to win the game, so don't try to be a hero, make that throw and get another interception. Just looks. Are you talking stuff. about messing up your stat line? I'm absolutely saying that. <laughs> it's real. Because people like seconds. us sit around and judge the numbers. You're right. You're right. What's that? 13 seconds remaining. Bill, let me go back to your point again. And Nate talked about all that Houston had to deal with in this yes. offseason. But you've got a veteran, a coaching staff that brings a lot of veteran experience to the table. Look at that. Coaching throw. staff, there's a touchdown nice. right there. The throw from Trevor Lawrence, who completes it in the end zone. And who's up to? Marvin Jones, I believe that Marvin is. Marvin Jones. So, hey. listen, that's a positive you take out of it. He took him down there in a one-minute situation. It's something to build on. But, again, I go back to you, You're right. There's a lot of veterans in that locker room. They hear the noise on the outside is not the same on the inside. It's us against the world. Nobody's giving us a chance. Very impressive showing right there today by the Houston Texans. Okay, well, Mar uh, Bill, I can't believe you didn't bring up Mark Ingram. That he ran <laughs> yeah. for 85 yards today, and Houston ran the football. And uh, so, but no, really good job by Mark Ingram. Yeah. New start down there, you know, leaving Baltimore. Good for him. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor, good game. So, yeah. a lot of positives for the Houston Texans. Five seconds remaining. If what we are seeing is accurate right now, the field, the point after is good. 37 21. So, coach, looking on the other side of the ledger from Jacksonville, are there some points that they can build on if the coaching staff does that right to get that confidence? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing like game experience and game tape to look at. You're going to learn from it, learn to make adjustments. Again, what is the identity of the Jacksonville Jaguars? That's something I always think the first four to five weeks you have to find out as a coach. A lot of times for Urban, when he went into it, he knew what he had before the season started. Right now in the National Football League, you got to find out who you are, and you gauge that by your opponents that you're playing and how you play on game day. And Trevor Lawrence made some good throws today. Made some yeah, great no, throws. Was a, there's a you lot of positive things. Oh, three touchdowns, a, three yeah. interceptions. Even that last one, as we were watching this together on the set, you know, boom, whispers, look at that throw. And it was a beautiful throw to Marvin Jones, and he had a few of those passes today. Um, and we know he's talented. Let's just call it what it is. The Jags have a lot of pieces that they need to add in order for this team to be a true competitor. You have Fenders. to develop a winning culture, and that's going to take time when you come off a 1-15 and 15 team. So when this game is over, we're going to take you again. Big doubleheader day coming up here on CBS, Kansas City at Cleveland, Miami at New England. And just remember the way that Baker Mayfield started, Josh Allen started, Sam Darnold started. It just takes time, but I will say... One thing about Trevor Lawrence, he has the physical presence on the field that you can see. He's a leader. He's going to be a really, really good player, if not a great player, but he's just got to get the right players around him. He's got to get comfortable, and he's going to see things now over the next five or six weeks that he's never seen before. And it's over, and that's going to be a huge win for David Culley, his first one as the head coach of the Houston Texans. So that wraps it up. Coming up on the other side of the commercial,